Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict. And I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet. So if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today my friends, I offer you another episode of our podcast, Yarn Talk and All the Things. My friends, it's jam packed. I had to shave some things off in order to make it a decent length because when I first glanced at the show notes, I said it's too long. So some of the things I'm going to save for another episode. In the meantime, I'm going to give you bullet points of today's episode and then we will move forward from there. But first, I want to talk about what's on Matt's head. So I've been changing it up, you know. And so what he has on his head today is called the No Limits Beanie. It's one of the earlier beanies before the Friendship series. So last month I did an entire month of Friendship beanies. Um, this came before that. So yeah, I wanna say January. Yeah, January or early February, I think. I can't remember exactly, but what it was was spin the wheel for a beanie. I put stitches on the wheel, we spun, we came up with the stitches, I formulated a recipe on the fly. I literally picked the colors, made the beanie, all in one episode. And this was the product of that episode. So this beanie here features a ribbed crown, which is totally inspired by Crystal over Baguette Crochet. She actually taught me how to make this. I follow her tutorials just like everyone else does. And yeah, so this is my nod to Crystal over Baguette Crochet. And from there, we do the star stitch. After that, it's the spiked double. That's what these things here are. After that, we have the waffle stitch, and then the herringbone stitch, and then what looks to be single crochets. Yeah, two rows of single crochets in the back loop to kind of give it that finished look. So that's what it's looking like. Feel free to check this out. I have both left and right handed tutorials in the show notes. Okay, so there is that. No limits beanie. And I chose the colors to match the sweater that I was wearing in that episode. <laughs> that was totally intentional. Many of the comments in that episode were like, Did you choose those colors because of the sweater you were wearing? And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so there's that. Now, for the bullet points of our podcast. So we're going to start this off with coffee talk. I like to talk about what's in my cup. I love coffee. I love all the things about it. And I'm exploring coffees because the viewers of the channel have been sending me coffee and happy mail. And so, yeah, today's coffee, I'll talk about that. And then we'll move on to the next one, the next bullet point, which is a finished object. From there, we'll talk about a whip. I have a whip that I want to share with you guys. I've shown it on the channel, but I have some updates. And then I have a small acquisition. So as you may or may not know, I am an affiliate with Premier Yarns. And so every now and then I like to peruse the website and, you know, shop their deals and steals. And so I posted this deal and steal on the community tab. And so that yarn haul is here. It's a little acquisition, not so much a haul, but it's here. And then after that, we have some happy mail. So within this happy mail that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I know about some yarn. I just don't know what the yarn is. So yeah, two friends of mine sent me some yarn and happy mail. So I'm going to share that with you guys. And so yeah, there's that. Let's jump into it, friends. So coffee talk. I have my, my mug here and inside is the Black Rifle coffee in hazelnut. And let me tell you, this is some serious coffee. It is so good, so strong, and all the things. If you want a quick pick-me-up, Black Rifle Coffee. It's so good. It's dark, it's rich, it's robust. I love it. Um, and it tastes amazing. You know, even out of the coffee pot, you throw it right into the microwave for an additional 30 seconds because I like it piping hot, like very hot. And so it's great. Some coffees... It just changes taste when you overheat it, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, it's good stuff. So that's the coffee. As I change coffees, I'm going to try all the coffees that were sent to me. As I change coffees, I'm going to talk about them and all that. So Black Rifle, good stuff. Love it. Okay, so next I want to talk about this finished object. 
okay? So I started this project during one of my Zoom meetings. I just, I saw the skein there in the basket with other yarns, and I said, let me try this. You know, I'm on the Zoom call, I'm letting everyone talk, I'm just relaxing. So I went ahead and pulled out um, the yarn and just did a granny square. Intentionally, you know, I, I said, okay, so not intentionally, but originally I planned on making just covers for couch pillows, but yarn barf everywhere happened. I mean, this, it's Casa yarn. So, I mean, it's four different kinds of yarn in one ball and it just did not want to work with me. It just fell all over the place. Long story short, I continued on and it turned out to be a throw. So let me show you this. <laughs> okay. So this is it. That's the result of five skeins of Bernat Casa. Let me just move the chair out of the way so I can kind of show you everything. So it's just a little throw, right? Granny square. So in the center there, it's gray shade. It's two skeins. And then after the two skeins of the gray shade, we have um, the blue here, which is mineral blue. And then on the outer edge is tawny brown. Now I only had one skein of the tawny brown, but I had two skeins of the mineral blue and the gray shade. And yeah, it worked out quite nicely. Now I will tell you that there was a lot of yarn barf. Everything was getting caught on to the homespun yarn. Um, I, it was, I mean, it's super soft though, super soft. Now, if you're not familiar with Casa yarn, uh, the, the brand of Bernat Casa yarn. So it's got four different kinds of yarn in it. So here you have this fuzzy eyelash type yarn here, and then you have velvet. And then from there you have um, what appears to be blanket yarn. And then this section right here is the homespun yarn. It's very bubbly and all the things. So it's four different kinds of yarn in one ball. And then I threw the three different colorways all in one project because this is all the Casa yarn that I have in all of my yarn stash. And I just wanted it to just be used up and be done with. <laughs> and it turned out to be pretty nice. So this is the other side. Yeah. So there's that, that's the finished object friends. It worked up super fast, all things considered. I mean, again, yarn barf all over the place, but all in all, it was nice, okay? Let me grab the chair, come back over here to be with you guys. Okay, so there is that, finished object. Love that. Okay, and it did work up a lot better than I thought it was gonna work up. I was questioning the brown, like, let me pull this back. So, I mean, brown and blue, fine, right? Black and blue, fine. But all three of them together, I questioned it. I'm like, I don't know if that's gonna work together, but you know what? This blanket is so crazy <laughs> in a good way. It's like, why not? Like go big or go home, you know? That was kind of my thought process. Let's just go all the way. Let's put all the yarn in the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> just put it all in there, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the whip. All right, friends. So, the whip. This pink project here started out, I mean, the birth of this project was literally a challenge. So, Sherry, a friend of the channel, said to me in an email, she said, she said, hey, I have a challenge for you. What about this pink hairy yarn? <laughs> I think originally she meant it as a joke because way back when I was calling the furry yarns hairy. And so, you know, she said, are you interested? And so I, I think I missed it. So then she bought me a cup of coffee using the link in the show notes. And I caught that. And so I responded right away, I think either in a video or an email. And I said, sure, I'm down for a challenge. Bring it on. And so she sent me the yarn. It was not, originally it was nine nine of these these balls here, 
And so I got that and I looked at it and I agreed with her. It just would not frog back right. It was just catchy. It felt amazing though. It felt like little clouds of cotton like in my hands. It was just so soft. And I think cotton would be a stretch. I think like it, it's too, it was just so like silk, right? Not cotton, like silk. Anyway, um, I had to sit on it and I said, you know what? I'm going to run DK weight yarn with this, like same colorway, you know, bright, not bright, but like light pink. And so, yeah, I sat here doing, a, during a crochet with me and I came up with the recipe on the fly. I mean, it's nothing extravagant. As I said in that video where you see me holding it like this, I wanted it to be a simple pattern, just a very simple situation, you know, nothing overly complicated, right? And so I'm running DK weight yarn with this yarn. So I then brought it to the live and I said during the live, I'm not sure if I have enough to finish this because originally I want to make a poncho, like two of these. I want to connect it and then I want to put fur around it. More specifically, this gray fur from Premier, just yarn. And I want to line it with the, the gray. Now, I considered white, I considered purple, but for me, the, the gray just did it. So anyway, I'm working it, I'm working it, and I'm realizing that to make a poncho, I have to go a lot further than a scarf, right? So let me back up. So for me, because, you know, I'm tall and all, I said, okay, for me, I need this to come down past my waist so that when someone else tries it on, it will actually fit like a poncho and not so much a scarf, you know? Um, so I said I need to do one or two more repeats for the one side, right? So right now I have four. One, two, three, and four. I was thinking five or six total repeats, you know? But I'm already halfway through the yarn, you know, the fuzzy part, because I started out with nine, okay? And as of right now, I have four full ones, and then I have half of this one, right? So I'm literally halfway through the yarn and I still have to go for, uh, further along in order to make this work. So case in point, I'm not going to have enough to do a front and a back. So I went on the live and I said, I don't know what this yarn is. It's super soft. It's, it, it feels amazing. And I did a close up. I did this and I'm showing how amazing this feels and that it doesn't shed, it doesn't shed. As, as fuzzy as this is, it doesn't shed, which I think is amazing. Um, and so several people have been on the case since the live, just scouring websites, wanting me to take pictures of different angles so that they can compare the yarns and things. And so we found out what the yarn was. So the yarn here is Mode DEA Dream Yarn, okay? mode DEA dream yarn and so um, it comes in um, little skeins and so these were wound up into like little hanks that's why we're seeing all of them this the same exact size because they were small like skeins anyway it is 57 nylon 43 acrylic it's worsted weight at 93 yards the colorway is called water lily and it was made in Italy. So that is what this is. And so I went looking around to see what I could find and it's scarce to say the least. I mean, I found maybe five skeins, right, online, which clearly is not enough. I think if I continue to go down to the six repeats, I will have used the half one that I'm on and another one of the full ones, which means I need six to complete the one side. I have three, I could have, you know, I could get the other three, but I need to do finishing touches. So, you know, yes, I'm putting fur on the bottom, but 
I need finishing rows, I need to do joins, um, I need to do, you know, the connects and all the things. So I think I would need maybe five, six more because it's only 95 yards. So it's not a lot of yardage. It looks like there's a lot there, but that's because it's fuzzy. It's got all the things to it. So yeah, anyway, I'm not making it complicated. I clearly won this challenge. <laughs> I won this challenge, but I'm not finished yet, okay? I, I got this in the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, I'm gonna go all the way down, okay? I'm gonna make a shawl, okay? Do a shawl length. It's gonna be an extra large shawl, right? Um, I'm thinking like a plus size shawl, like really big. And I'm gonna do nice edging here. I'm going to do some nice edging here and then I'm going to apply the fur. It's going to be really nice. Since I can only do one side, I'm going to do this one side. Amazing. I'm going to do this side like 150% better than I would have had I done two sides. So <clears throat> that's where I'm at with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so as far as the other part of the yarn, I've already used an entire skein of the Premier Basics DK. Done. I'm halfway through this one already. So I could easily get more of this. I wasn't worried about this part. Um, it was literally this, this other yarn. And this is my first project using um, fuzzy yarn. And I'm loving it. It's not shedding. I think my hang up was the shedding but it's not shedding and it feels great. So be on the lookout for this friends. Like I'm super excited. Obviously it's not for me, but when it's done and I have the recipe all typed out, I'm gonna share this with you guys. Again, it's not overly complicated, but in case someone else wants to make this, right? I'm sure the Mo DEA yarn is not the only, you know, fuzzy yarn that's out there on the market. Someone can get something else comparable and do the same project, you know? So yeah, be on the lookout for the rest of the details on that in the future. In the meantime, let me just fold this back up, fold it nice and neat, and move on from there. Okay, so next we have this little Premier Yarn acquisition. Super nice. Friends, we are flying through this episode. I'm loving it. <laughs> Let's get into it, friends. Okay, so a few days ago, maybe a few days, listen, Premiere has been on their game. Like, I've been getting my orders from Premiere super fast. I'm loving that. And uh, anyway, I think it was last week, there was a sale on their but uh, butterfly yarns. And you could get three skeins for 15 bucks, but you had to get three. And so I have some butterfly in here, and I think I have Dottie. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Yes, I have Dottie in here. That was on sale too. I can't remember what the sale was, but it was a good it was a good deal. So let's get into it. Oh yeah, I'm super excited about this. Okay. Let me just organize the situation. Oh yeah. What? This is the first time that I'm actually touching this. This is new to me yarn. This is the Dotty yarn. Oh, wow. Okay, let me just show it to you already. So this is Dotty, Premier Dotty. It is a light three weight yarn. It's squish. I know that's not the correct way to say it, but it's squishy. <laughs> it's giving me squish. <laughs> so it is 656 yards, 600 meters seven ounces, 200 grams. It's 100% acrylic. And the colorway name is called Prairie. So it has like yellows and mocha browns, blues, and like this golden yellow. It's so nice. And this is what it looks like worked up. Just random dots all over the place. Love that. And so I already have the other yarns that I want to work with this project. So I have Premier Basics DK. Uh, so I'm going to run another three weight yarn with this project, not together, but in the project. 
Um, and I'm using all of these colors here in that project, which by the way, friends, on the website, if you go to premiereyarns.com and you go into Premier Basics DK, you'll see like all of the complementary colors that could go with this. I was super excited about that. I was at first worried. I was like, do they have the colors that could run with this? And I should have known. The answer is yes, they definitely do. And so as you may or may not know, I am an affiliate, so I have the link in the show notes. Feel free to check it out. Um, and if it's something that you're interested in, feel free to try it out. I can't wait to try this. What is the hook recommendation? So it's a four millimeter crochet hook, um, US letter G. I will tell you that um, I will not go that small for a three weight yarn. I will work this, I'm just feeling it. I would go like a five millimeter or five and a half for some drape, depending on what I you know, end up making. But yeah, I could go four millimeter. I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. So I got four of those. Okay. Next, I'm excited about this because I've never tried this before. Oh, look at that. Look at that squishy squish. Super, super nice. So um, this is 100% anti-pilling acrylic. It is a three weight yarn, four millimeters uh, for the recommendation for the crochet hook, US letter G, just like the dotty. Um, and this colorway here is called Retro Sunset. Let me open this up because I need to know what this feels like. So it slides all around and things, okay. Oh yeah, that's so nice. Anti-pilling acrylic, great for wearables, anti-pilling. It's so nice, the squish factor, love that. That's so nice. And look at how this colorway is laid out. So the cream is like thick and then it just goes down. What I'm thinking is this was intentional. So if you were to make like a triangle shawl um, and you would start by the neck, so the width of the center here, and then as you go out, the more stitches, the longer your rows are, it's to keep everything even. So this was intentional. I believe that these particular cakes are specifically designed for like shawls and things like that. You can make anything you want with these, but yeah, I think that's great. So retro sunset, it's very vintage. It gives me like that vintage, you know, 70s vibe. And I'm all about that, you know, being a Gen X and everything, love that. And next, so I had three of those, and then I also got these three. So the next colorway, same specs and everything, this is Riverbank. Now, the layout of this is a little different, so it's not as um, separated, if that makes any sense, like how the sunset has that large gap in the, in the beginning there. This here is more evened out with just a little stripe of the dark right there, if you can see that. So, and that's what it looks like in the middle, but I almost feel like this might not represent this correctly because you see how wide this is and then the stripes in here are different as opposed to this. I almost feel like they're both supposed to look like that just because of how this is laid out. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this works up because this image doesn't match what the cake looks like and it should. So all of it should be even, and it's it's kind of lopsided, if that makes any sense to you guys. Yeah. But this seems to be accurate, whereas you have your, your thick cream, and then all of the rest of the stripes here are all even. So that looks correct to me. So stay tuned, friends. I'm interested to see how this works up, okay? So... I'm going to place you guys on a brief pause. I'm going to get myself situated here and we'll move on to the next part of our podcast. 
Just one second, okay? Okay, friends, I am back. For you, it was a second. For me, a little longer than a second. <laughs> but we are back. Okay, so I have some Happy Mail here. As you guys are aware, as I said earlier, I do have two pieces of Happy Mail here that um, I know it's yarn. I just don't know what kind of yarns and things. So I'm super excited to share that with you. But I have had a couple pieces of mail sitting here just waiting for me to open. I want to knock that out before I get to the yarn boxes. So I've already pre-opened this one here. So it's this package right here, brown envelope, Amazon. And inside, it's a book, okay. Oh, look at that. So it is a crochet planner. We love organization, friends. <laughs> when one can organize, one should, and it would be good. So this is so cool. Crochet planner. It's got social media content ideas. I love that. I'm full of ideas. Goals tracker, sales tracker, crochet connections, Crochet directory. That's cool. I love that. I gotta put your Wayne's in there, Michael's in there. <laughs> it's it's so cool. Alright, so let's see if there's a note. Oh, here it is. Okay. So there's a note in here. It says, Juan, I thought this would be perfect for you to be able to write all the things in. Thank you for all you do. I really enjoy watching you and of course love Mama too. Enjoy my friend from Sharita. Thank you so much, Sharita. This is gonna be put to good use. Yes, it will. I have tons of things planning. Um, actually, I have tons of things written down everywhere. I need to centralize it, so this is perfect. Thank you so much, Sharita. It's great, love it. Okay, moving on to the next one here. Another box right here from Amazon. Let's crack that open. I'm curious, what is this? Let's see. Let's see. See, nowadays, I don't know if the Happy Mail is for me or if it's for mom. So if I accidentally open it and it's for mom, I'm gonna reseal it and then give it to her. Let's see. Okay, it says, one, I saw this and I couldn't resist. I know you have a lot of cups, enjoy your gift. From Sugar Diamond. <laughs> she was just one of the winners off the last live. That's so cool. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so look. I open this up, right? Look. See that? Look inside. <laughs> Squirrel, look at the squirrel. I love this. This is so good. This is amazing. <laughs> squirrel. Oh my stars. I love this. Look, guys. You guys have caught me. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, sugar. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you, sugar. I needed that laugh. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Now, the last box before we get into the yarn is right here. Another Amazon box. Let's check this out. Let's see what's in it. <gasps> Look at this. What is this? It says, hello, Juan. Since you like the project bag I got you, I wanted to get you this backpack so you'll be able to carry all the things and even charge your phone, my friends. Sending all my love from Texas from Sharita. Sharita, you didn't have to do this. The mug was everything. Look at that. It's still everything. It's everything. I love it. Thank you so much, Sharita. Oh, so good. So good. Let's open up this project bag. I want to see it. Let's look at it. Let's see what it looks like, my friends. I don't have a yarn backpack. 
Let's look at it. I love how they do this, how it's like set up like that. That's super nice. Look at that. Oh yeah, this is so nice. Oh yeah, this is so nice. I can put all my yarn in there. Oh, and there's a plate right here. Yep. We could do the yarn. There's holes here. Let's look at that. Holes on this side. Holes on this side to do the yarn and things. I'm going to have to come out of my shell and start doing this outside. This might push me to the edge to do it. Because I, like I like to crochet in my squirrel's nest. <laughs> and for those of you guys who don't know what my squirrel's nest is, next door here is where, you know, a majority of my yarn is. And I have it all around me. It's everywhere over there. I mean, it's organized now, it's nice and neat, but there's just yarn everywhere. And I love to crochet over there. So, yep. Thank you so much, Sharita. I appreciate that. I'm gonna definitely use this. Cool. Okay, thank you. All right, so now we have, ooh, we have these two boxes here. Now, um, these two boxes come from friends of mine. They told me they were sending me the yarn. I have no idea what yarns are in these bags. I mean, boxes, I'm sorry, I can't speak. But I'm excited to share these with you because I like, I love a good surprise, you know? I think that's why I love mystery boxes. You know, you just don't know what's inside the box. And then, you know, it's yarn. So I'm like a kid in a candy store. You can't go wrong with yarn, friends. I mean, now that I've expanded my horizons to fuzzy yarns and novelty things, you know, you just can't go wrong. It's all yarn. It's all good. It's just yarn, friends. <laughs> it's all the things, you know? Mm. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the box open. Let's open it up. This box here comes to us from Mark and Lanny. So, like I said, they're friends of mine. They've been around since the beginning of my channel. Huge supporters of the channel and of me and mom and all the things, you know? So good. And by all accounts, Lanny and Mark, you guys didn't have to do this. I definitely appreciate all the things, you know? I'm a giver and I'm also a receiver. You know, I know what it feels like to be able to give somebody something. The feeling is great. And so I like to reciprocate. I love all aspects of it. So, yeah. Okay, so inside the box, we see this. I like to show you guys this so you guys can see what I see. Okay? Now, let's see. There is an envelope for Juan and an envelope for Mama Wilma. Okay. So let's open up mine. Oh, look at this. Isn't that just the best? I love that. Oh, it's a shame I have to open it. Like, let me try. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good. Let's look at this. It says, I just go batty over yarn. Well, it's true. I go batty over yarn. And isn't that amazing? I love that. If I knew how to do aragurumis... I would want to recreate that. Stay tuned, my friends. I may have to create this. <laughs> I love this. It says, I'm hooked on knitting. <laughs> I love it. Where can I put this? I'm going to put this right here with my other things. So cool. Okay. It says, one, you may read all of my notes. Again, I found a huge bag of yarn at the thrift store. I love buying new yarn, but the thrill of the hunt is just too much for me. I think I found some treasures and I'm passing them on to you. Don't worry, I found plenty for me. Good stuff. I know of no one else who would be able to get these to the right places. I taught Mark how to cross stitch when he had a hip replacement. I love sheep and he made me a set of these a couple years ago. Then we found this pin in a grab bag and he was inspired to make a set for you. What? Mark made something for me? 
The other cross-stitch items are from him also. He loves watching your videos with me and especially the Sunday lives with your mom. He wanted to do something for you also. Okay, I need to get this boxed up and in the mail. Loves and hugs, Mark and Lanny. Well, listen, thank you so much. Ugh. First of all, I love thrifting for yarn, okay? I love it. You know, my aunt, my grandmother, they always said, you don't always have to go to Woolworths for your yarn. You can go to the thrift stores. Yarn is everywhere if you're willing to look for it. So I know what you mean by the thrill of the hunt. I'm all about that. Okay, so cool. So let's get into the... Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? This is so beautiful. Are you kidding me right now? This is so great. Mark, you did such a great job. I want to frame this. Wow. This is so good. Guys, I love squirrels. Have you... I'm sure you figured that out. But I love squirrels. In my uh, Facebook group, <laughs> I told them, I said, if it has anything to do with squirrels, feel free to post. I love squirrels. So that is cool. I love that. Okay. Where can I put that? I want to keep looking at it. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's see. What is this? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, Mark and Laney are members of the official Yarn Addicts, and we're doing a project, and so they sent some squares to me for the project, which I can disclose later on, but I do want to show you guys these beautiful squares that they made for the project that I'm working. Absolutely beautiful. I love this. So nice. A 3D motif. And I love this. It's almost like the sunburst granny. As a matter of fact, I think that's what it is. It's a sunburst granny pattern. I love it. And then your traditional granny. Gray Heather. I know Gray Heather by Red Heart Gray Heather. That's what this is. Black and white. This is all Red Heart. Love it. Love that. Oh yes, for sure. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's gorgeous. Okay, Mark and Lanny. Great job on your squares, my friends. Love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, I will update you guys on this. This is something we're working behind the scenes. And once we bring that to the forefront, I'm going to show you all of these. Okay? So stay tuned for that. And yes, so, yep, all of it. These are the details of the squares. All Super Saver. Okay, I know my yarn. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't know all the yarn, but I know a lot of it. <laughs> okay, so, it says, Juan, I'm sure you may have an idea as to what is in this bag. Mystery? Hee hee hee, yes, it's your worst nightmare. But just maybe... It could be someone else's dream. You may do whatever you'd like with this yarn as well as all the yarn that I've sent you. Curate into your yarn museum, use it, or pass it on to someone who would love it. You are the one who knows all the things and what to do with this. Lanny. I love the whole thing. This whole theme that's going on here. I'm in love with this. I'm, I'm here for this. I'm here for all the things. So the note is as such. Everything is wrapped up in here. Okay. So first glance, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Here, here it goes. <laughs> uh, I can feel it. Is this novelty yarn? Let's see. stars <laughs> look at all of this pink fluffy yarn 
Look at all the pink fluffy yarns. <laughs> it's called Kitten Soft. <laughs> Kitten Soft Yarn. Uh, made in Switzerland. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. And this is vintage yarn. This is this is very vintage. Uh, Spinnerin yarn. Made in Switzerland. It's 57 mohair, 43 acrylic. Uh, it's one ounce, and it doesn't really give yardage or anything like that, or a metrics, nothing like that. Um, it does recommend a number seven knitting needle. So there's that. So, yeah. <laughs> we love the pink yarn, friends. We love the pink yarn, right? Embrace the pink. <laughs> Love it. Okay, okay, moving on. Let's move on to this one here. Let's see what's in this one. Okay, okay. Love that. I've never seen this before. Wow. Look at, look at this. So this is uh, Stanley Barocco. Wow, this is like vintage Barocco. Suggested gauge, four stitches, a number eight needle. Um, hand washable, an unusual Irish import, brushed variegated yarn in three colors. It's 77 wool, 23 viscose. Net weight, uh, 50 grams, approximately 110 yards. Wow. This is vintage bouge. Wow. Okay, this is like vintage Barocco. You see, you see me with my hands. I'm like, what do we do with it? Look at that. This is super nice. Wow. Okay. Next, we have Katya Surprise. This is a bulky weight yarn, 87 yards. This is called Surprise Taupe. It's 53 wool, 43 acrylic. And there is no recommended... Uh, um, nope. Let's see. The recommended needle is a USA 11 through 13. And what else is on here? Let's see. That's it. No hook recommendation. But based on the thickness here, 8 millimeter, between a 6 and an 8, I would use for that. Super nice. Okay. It says... Um, it says, I don't know if these serve any purpose other than being cute. <laughs> well, we love that. We love that for us. Let's see. What's cute? What's cute? Let's see what is cute. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> little kitty, little kitty needles. I love that. I love that. Okay, go in, in with the squirrel. Love that, yes. Everything has a purpose, friends. Everything has a purpose. Okay, what's this? <laughs> it's a beautiful jade green. I love the colorway. This is real mohair, made in Italy. Wow, mohair blend, vintage, Columbia Minerva, mohair blend it is, let's see, this one here is 50 mohair, 50 acrylic, washable colors, permanently moth-proofed, net weight one ounce, the colorway is turquoise heather, and the gauge recommended size for the knitting needles are an eight and yeah the only downside to vintage yarn balls and things is the information is a lot different um, than it is today today we have more specs and things whereas back then you just you know you winged it um you know you took what they gave you and you just ran with it you know this one here is slightly different right so this one here is 90 mohair, 10 wool, okay? And then, let's see, 
Approximate yardage is 75 yards. There's really no other information other than color 707, made in Italy. Love that. And I think these two are twins. And this is the cousin. <laughs> You're related, you know. So there's that. Super nice. Okay. So you have this. Let's open this up. This is great. This is Mark. I see his initials here. So if you haven't frogged, have you crocheted today? I don't know. <laughs> I love this. This is so good. Oh, where am I going to put it? It's going to be, it's going to be great. I love that. I may have to put some of this in the squirrel's nest because the squirrel's nest needs de decorations as well, you know? So I may have to do some reorganizing and because I do lives and things on the other side. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, look at this. Isn't this great? Look. I'm hooked on knitting. So nice. Love that. I'm hooked on crochet. I'm holding it wrong. I'm sorry. So... I'm hooked on knitting. I'm hooked on crochet. Then there's blue. And then there's yellow. Wow. The work that went into this. I'm blown away. It's so good. And look at that. That's so good. Wow. Mark, that's amazing. Such a great job. Thank you guys so much for, for all of the thought that went into that. It's great. I love it. I almost want to just like keep it on the shelf. Don't touch it. Don't use it. Let's just look at it and ooh and ah at it and all the things. So, okay. Okay. So, here we have some vintage yarns. We have uh, green oak acrylic. So, this is Kmart. Kmart yarn. You guys remember Kmart? Super squish, floor ply, uh, knitting worsted weight, uh, three ounces, 100% acrylic, and the colorway is brown. Yep. That's Kmart symbol right there. Love that. Okay, next we have Radiant 100% DuPont acrylic. Um, wow. Okay, so there's that. It's called Country Rose. It feels so good. I mean, clearly vintage, obviously, but like, even after all these years, it feels great. So good. It's a three ounce skein. And guess what, friends? See that? The patterns and things? Be on the lookout because I'm collecting these and I will be doing them. So, super excited about that. And here's another one. Um, knit and crochet yarn radiance, the same recipe. And another thing I mentioned in the last video with the vintage yarns, you'll see these um, little logos here. The star just means that it was uh, made in the USA, certified with pride in the USA. So, yeah. And so there's that. Love that. Okay. Oh, this is so good. I mean, can you even? So this is Spearmint, and I don't have this in my colorway over here. So look, let me see if I can tilt you guys over. So those two cubbies right here, okay, apart from what's in storage, like I try to keep some, you know, but in all of my stash, I don't have Spearmint. So this is great. And I'm not going to like store it. I'm actually going to use this because I love this colorway. Love it. Okay. So we have Oh Baby Organic from Lion Brand. A three pack there. I'm going to keep it right in its packaging. It's super, super, super nice. It's a two weight yarn. They recommend a three and a half millimeter crochet hook. 
Um, yeah, it is 1.75 ounces at 50 grams. You can barely see that. I'm sorry, but it's 180 yards, 165 meters. It's like midnight blue. It's like the darkest blue you can find. Super dark. Okay. So now we have some honey spun ombre. Wow. This is the old school target. Look at that. So it's pastel ombre and it is a uh, three ounce four ply, 100% Orlin acrylic. Love that. I mean, it is so pale, you can barely pick it up. You see that? At first glance, it looks like a white skein of yarn. But when you look closely, you start to pick up those small little notes of colors there, you know? And so there's two of them here in the, ba in the box. <laughs> <laughs> the things you peel back when you start digging in the box. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. You'll see in a second. So <laughs> we have Lion Brand Amazing. I think that's just the name of it. Lion Brand Amazing. So the colorways are perfect. We love that. It's called Regatta. That's the colorway name, Regatta. And it is a medium four weight yarn. It's 1.75 ounces, 147 yards, 135 meters. Machine wash cool, lay flat to dry. Um, Lionbrain.com, made in Italy. So that is awesome. Yep. Next here we have Loops and Threads. This is their old label, Loops and Threads. So wool to wash. Look at the label. Super cool. 157 yards, 144 meters. It's black. The color is black there. It is a medium four weight yarn. Um, the recommended hook size is five and a half millimeters. Machine wash warm. Um, lay flat to dry. Yeah. Super nice. It's 100 grams at three and a half ounces. That's what I was looking for. And it appears to be a roving style yarn. I haven't seen like a solid black roving style yarn. Most of the roving yarns that I have and that I've seen were like either ombre or multicolored of some sort, but not solid. So that's awesome. And then here we have Premier Anti-Pilling. This is great. You could always make do with this. So Premier Anti-Pilling, yes, this is good stuff, friends. Good for wearables. You know, and all that. So, what I was laughing about, friends, was these. <laughs> okay, so, you guys know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but I'm starting to bag up my yarn. And I talked about the slider bags and how, you know, they're reusable and, you know, and all the things. So... Everyone went on a hunt looking for slider bags. All of a sudden, none of the stores had slider bags. I'm not taking responsibility for that, I promise. I'm just saying the timing was very suspicious. So everyone started to bag up their yarns and things. And so, you know, we started looking for pricing and where could we get them and all that. So... I also talked about, you know, yarns being an investment, not feeling like, you know, you have too much yarn. Friends, the, the yarn doesn't expire, right? If you have a space to put it, bag it up, you know, and just store it somewhere until you get to it. Because, I mean, yarns, they're getting more and more expensive. So if you can get that deal and steal now, pack it up and use it later when you, you need it, it's here. And so think about some of these skeins. So for instance, this skein here, when it was made, was only 99 cents. Imagine how much this is right now, okay? In comparison, right? So Red Heart Super Saver, three and a half ounces, right? You can buy that, um, sorry, three ounces. I wanna say roundabout figuratively four bucks, right? Between 350 and four bucks, 99 cents. Now imagine if you bought your yarn today for a deal and a steal, let's just say, for a good deal, $2.80, right? With coupons and all the things. Let's say you store it in your attic for about five years. How much do you think that yarn's gonna cost in five years? Definitely not what you paid for it today. So if you have the space, 
store it. It's acrylic. I mean, it doesn't really need all kinds of like breathing room and things. You know, it's acrylic. It's not a natural fiber. So put it in plastic. You're preventing any kind of like um, moisture from getting into the bag and things. So that's what I've been doing and it's serving me well. So there's that. Lanny and Mark, this box is above and beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, it had every single thing in here, even the pink and all the things, the squirrels, the squares. I mean, it has everything. Thank you, thank you guys so much. This is great. I thought I was just opening up vintage yarns to be perfectly honest, which yes, that has been the case and it's great and I love it, but all the squirrels and, and the things, that's so cool. Thank you so much. I'm gonna treasure this stuff like forever. Seriously, this is great. Like memories, right? So I'm gonna look back at this and I'm gonna be like, I got that in Happy Mail. I did a whole video about it. It's gonna be great. So let me pause you guys very quickly. I'm gonna clean all of this up and we'll all open up the last box, okay? Just give me one second. Okay, friends, so here we are with the last box, okay? And so just as I was organizing and cleaning the yarns up from Mark and Lanny's uh, Happy Mail box, I went ahead and looked at the camera and noticed that we were beyond the 55-minute mark. Like, we're long. So I went into this podcast episode saying to myself, and I think I mentioned it, that I did not want this to be excessively long. So I'm making a decision. I'm going to hold on to this box until the next uh, podcast episode, or I may just do a separate video labeled Happy Mail, and I may go through it and show you guys all the things. I haven't decided that yet, but I did go back and forth with this decision in between takes. Um, again, for you guys, it was probably a second for me, a little longer than that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hold on to this until the next time I come back on here, um, whether that's a podcast episode or just a video of some sort. Um, not really sure, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, feel free to hit the like button. Give me a little thumb, either free. Um, and then also too, if I've earned your subscription, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, I would appreciate that as well. Hit the notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. I go live every Sunday at 6 p.m. Feel free to stop by and say hi. I'm there with my mother and we just enjoy each other's company and we enjoy your company. So feel free to stop by at that time. So that is it for this video, my friends. And until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.